Pitt Fix is here to curate your weekend watch list with three to see, and this week we're bringing you Brad Pitt, Baywatch, and Buena Vista Social Club. Welcome to Baywatch. Explosions, The Rock, Zac Efron in pretty convincing drag. Baywatch is back and things seem to blow up a lot around here. And let's face it, summer popcorn eye candy is nothing new for this franchise. The series spanned 11 seasons to become one of the most watched television shows in the world. It's been referenced in multiple TV shows and movies over the years, most notably as a major plot point in Borat. So how's Baywatch going to successfully reboot a nearly 30-year-old TV show that once lured billions to the small screen with network-friendly erotica before the age of internet porn, spray tans, and twerking? The key seems to be in the comedy. <laughs> Baywatch makes fun of its predecessor while also paying homage to it in a winking at the audience tone that shares DNA with the super successful 21 Jump Street reboot. Why does she always look like she's running in slow-mo? Even its tagline seems to be looking back with humor at what the series was known for. Live fast, run slow. A totally different take on comedy is War Machine. Brad Pitt's latest film was described as a shrewd blend of wartime drama and workplace satire by Eric Cohn of IndieWire. War Machine is loosely based on the true story of four-star General Stanley McChrystal, a decorated military heavyweight notorious for bungling his job in Afghanistan and talking smack about former VP Joe Biden. It's a lost cause. You can stay in Afghanistan forever. That's why I'm gonna win it. It's a satirical comedy which, Dr. Strangelove and Tropic Thunder aside, isn't quite as common for a war movie. That could be considered a tougher sell for a mainstream theatrical audience. When War Machine's original distributors balked at the $60 million price tag, Netflix swooped in and scooped up the property. With a total monthly viewership of 100 million viewers, Netflix has the eyeballs and monthly subscription dollars to program riskier fare. You need to behave like a leader. But I am behaving like a leader. I'm unavailable. Nearly 20 years ago, music legend Ry Cooter had the ambitious idea to bring together renowned Cuban musicians to record an album and perform it live. His friend filmmaker Vim Vendors came on board to direct the documentary, and Buena Vista Social Club was born. The doc and album were a smashing success and sparked a global interest in Cuban music. Adios follows five of the original band members as they take us on a walk down the memory lane of pre-Castro Cuba, all the way through to the fateful events of 1999 and the Cooter Vendors collab, up until the present, where we explore their current farewell tour. In many ways, the goodbye tour of these talented musicians marks the end of an era in political and global culture and the dawn of a new era in progressive music and politics. Whether it's The Rock reviving a 90s classic, witnessing a farewell tour from Cuba's own Buena Vista Social Club, or watching Brad Pitt choose scenery, let us know how you'll be spending your Memorial Day weekend in the comments below, and keep coming back to Hit Fix on Uproxx.